Hi, and welcome back to Educator.com. Today we're going to talk about homologous recombination and site-specific recombination of DNA. So this is linking back on the previous unit um, where we introduced the concept of homologous recombination, and now we're really going to get into the details. So as an overview, we're going to talk about all things uh, homologous recombination. All right, so uh, double holiday junctions, uh, uh, resolution versus the synthesis-dependent strand annealing, um, which we introduced last time. And then we're also going to talk about single strand annealing, uh, break-induced replication, meiotic recombination, as well as double strand break repair in prokaryotes. Um, and finally, we'll have a, a short overview on site-specific recombination. Now, homologous recombination, once again, remember, we can call this HR, uh, is genetic recombination in which the nucleotide sequences are exchanged between two similar, which are called homologous, or identical uh, molecules of DNA. So two similar molecules of DNA are called homologous DNA. Okay? Um, this will produce new combinations of DNA sequences during meiosis. Now, HR is often used in horizontal gene transfer to exchange genetic material between different strains and species of bacteria and viruses. That's what that is called. Uh, horizontal gene transfer is the passing of DNA from one, let's say, bacteria to the other bacteria, um, as opposed to the passage through um, uh, the uh, new generations of uh, proliferation. Okay. So uh, homologous recombination that occurs during DNA repair tends to result in what is called a non-crossover product. So meaning it's fully repaired back to normal. It's as if nothing had happened. All right. Now we're also going to talk about forms of homologous recombination where we get what are called crossover products. So homologous recombination, re reminders from, from last unit, uh, it repairs double strand breaks during S phase or, or G2 phase using long homologous sequences as templates for synthesis. So if we look here, the red and blue chromosomes are called homologs okay, or homologous chromosomes. They are not the exact same sequence, but they are very, very similar. Okay? Now, the process of homologous recombination encounters um, uh, m uh, several of these things that we're going to talk about. Um, and generally, we start with resection. We then go to strand invasion, followed by holiday junction formation, and then either uh, double strand break repair or uh, synthesis-dependent strand annealing. Now, after a double strand break occurs, the MRN complex will bind to DNA on either side of that break. Okay? We then have 5' prime to 3' prime resection, which allows us to have a 3' prime overhang. And then we have proteins coming in, binding these 3' prime overhangs, okay, specifically RPA and RAD51. We're talking about eukaryotic right now. Okay. And this forms a nucleoprotein filament. What that means is it's a filament of nucleic acid, right, our DNA, and proteins, right, our RPA, our RAD51, and others. We then go through what's called homology searching. So we're looking for a piece of DNA that has roughly the same sequence. Okay. And then we go through a process called strand invasion. Okay. And the, that nucleoprotein filament invades the other homologous chromosome. Okay, so it goes into that DNA duplex. Now, if we're talking about uh, being in mitosis, you'd be invading a sister chromatid. So you're using, those are identical chromosomes. That's the best time that you could do this. Or if we're in meiosis, you're using homologous chromosomes. So it's not the exact sequence, but basically uh, the same. It's very similar. And when you go through strand invasion, you form what's called a, dis a displacement loop or a D loop. Now, DNA polymerase, once we've gone through strand invasion, DNA polymerase will extend the end of the invading three prime strand 
via normal DNA synthesis. Um, and it's using the new DNA, okay, from that homologous chromosome uh, as a template molecule, all right? And this whole strand invasion and, and uh, initiation of synthesis will form a cross-shaped structure, which we call a holiday junction. Okay. Now, DNA synthesis will continue, okay, and that's continuing on the invading strand, so the original piece of DNA, not the homologous new piece, okay, effectively restoring the strand on the homologous chromosome that was displaced during strand invasion. Okay. Um, the double strand break repair is then completed by one of the two pathways. We either have the double strand break repair, which we can also call the double holiday junction model, or SDSA, which is the synthesis dependent strand annealing model. So let's talk about the first one uh, being the double holiday junction model. Okay. So the double strand break repair pathway is unique okay, in that the second three prime overhang, which is not involved in strand invasion, will also form a holiday junction with the homologous chromosome. Okay, so now we have what's called a double holiday junction. Okay, that will then get converted into recombination products by endonucleases. So we have cleavage events occurring here, right? And so the double strand break pathway often results in crossovers. Okay, and this is the model of how crossover of homologous recombination occurs during meiosis. And we'll talk specifically about crossing over during meiosis uh, in, in a few slides after we've explained these models.